hey welcome back to the lecture so let's understand some of the basics of i2c protocol and let's begin so in i2c always remember that the data transfer is always initiated by the master on the sda line so let's consider this is the sda line and master initiates the data transfer by first producing the start condition so this is called as start condition. After the start condition, the address phase follows. The address phase is of eight bits. So here, this is the address phase. In the address phase, first seven bits are actually the address of the slave. So this is seven bit slave address. And the remaining one bit is actually decides the read or write operation. So this is usually called as RW bar or read write bit. If this bit is zero, that indicates that master is going to write the data or master is going to transmit the data. And if this bit is one, then it indicates that master is going to read the data from the slave. That is also called as read operation. So read means read from the slave. Write means write to slave. All right. Now let's assume that this bit is zero. So collectively, the address phase is of eight bits, isn't it? So you have to remember that every byte put on SDA line must be 8 bits long. You cannot put 7 bits, you cannot put 16 bits like that. You have to put one byte, all right? Each byte must be followed by an acknowledge bit. Once the 8 bits are sent in the address phase, slave is going to receive this and slave is going to match its own address with the seven bit slave address sent. If there is any match, then slave is going to send this ACK. This is the ACK which is sent by the slave. So master receives the ACK here. So once master receives the ACK, so it is going to do write operation. So that means it is going to write one byte of data in this case, because RW bar zero means it's a write operation, right? So master is going to send one byte to the slave. So when slave receives this data, slave means slave which is addressed by this address. So when slave receives this one byte, which is data, this is data. So slave is going to send the ACK. So saying that it received the data byte. And remember that data is transferred with the most significant bit first. So this you have to remember. When master wants to send more data and it can send more data. So whenever a byte of data is sent, ACK will be received. And when master decides to close the communication with the slave, then master generates the stop condition. This is a stop condition which is generated by the master to close the communication. So this is how the I2C protocol works. So this is how master and slave communicates. For example, let's consider this bit as one. So if this bit is one, then it means that master is going to read the data from the slave. So after ACK, so this is the ACK received by slave. After that, what happens is this is the data which is now sent by the slave to the master. And this ACK is now given by the master. So master acts that data. And if master thinks that it has got sufficient data, then master can generate the stop condition. So this is a stop condition where the bus will be released. So the stop condition always releases the bus. So once the stop condition is generated, master has no control over the bus and some other master can initiate the data transfer. 
So that's the meaning of stop. So you have to remember that. So here, after generating the start condition, master holds the line. And after generating the stop condition, master releases the line. So this you have to remember. And don't worry, as you make a progress, you'll understand more. Now let's move forward. So the first byte after the start procedure is called as address face. And address face is collection of slave address and read write bit. So this you have to remember. Now let's move forward. And in the next lecture, let's understand what exactly start and stop conditions. So how does it look? We'll see in the next lecture.